Howdy YouTube pards, Jack Spade back with High Noon Leatherworks. Here we are back with a new project and uh, got done with the Hand of God holster in the last series and this series we're going to start out with a brand new project and we're going to be making something we haven't made on the channel yet. We're going to be making a knife sheath for this knife. It is a Uncle Henry uh, limited edition fixed blade knife made by Schrade so we're gonna make a custom knife sheets for this and it's actually for a very special project that I'm doing and I'll fill you in on that toward the end of the series when we complete the knife sheath so it will be a surprise at the end so Come on in a little closer and we'll get started. All right, first thing we're going to do is we are going to make a pattern for this knife. So we will uh, get our pencil and our pen. And I am going to put a belt loop on it uh, so someone can wear it on their belt. Um, it will be a two piece so instead of folding the leather over um, I will make it two piece and it will be sewn all the way around where the blade goes. Um, that does make it uh, a little thicker. I'll actually put uh, an extra piece of leather between the front and the back and that gives you more space for that knife to go in and out so it protects the stitches from the blade itself which this knife is very sharp so it wouldn't take if you didn't put that extra space or thickness of leather between the front and the back to allow that knife to slide in and out uh, it would end up cutting those stitches so uh, we'll also do that so the first thing I need to do is go ahead and lay this out for a pattern and I'll get my straight edge and what I want to do is you got to be careful on these knife sheaths when you have a knife that comes down and the top of the blade curves because if you try to curve that sheath to match this exactly you'll have a problem getting it in and out of the sheath so what you want to do is you want to basically end up coming down and continuing that line to the tip so that's how we'll do. I'll actually uh, draw out the pattern around the knife itself. Then I'll come back and I'll straighten that line out with my straight edge. So I'll start here. on the top, come around the bottom of the blade side and it's going to be a lot like making a gun holster in that we will have to add a little bit of space because um, if we make or cut that leather to be exact that size and not allow for a little bit of space on each side it's going to be so tight getting that in and out you're going to end up cutting the inside of the sheath so we will allow for a little extra
I'll go around the guard just so I have an idea where the guard and the handle is because we want our guard to sit down on the top of the sheath itself and then again we'll have to have enough leather down here on this side to fold over and stitch so that you can wear it on a belt so it'll have a belt loop on it so I've drawn around the knife itself and next thing I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll straighten or draw a straight line on the top so I know see it right here where I connected those that line from the guard down to the tip and that'll let that slide in there straight instead of that point of that knife wanting to catch and then I'll measure from that line over to the widest point so looks like approximately one and seven eighths of an inch so what I'll do is to get that just like on a gun holster um, we have to have some stitching room so the first thing I'll do is I'll give that probably a sixteenth of an inch on each side so we'll go two inches total might be a hair more than a sixteenth on each side but closer to maybe an eighth and that's going to be my opening for my blade and again I will keep the bottom arced So I'll draw that straight line. On the top and the bottom. As you can see, now I'm getting the outline pretty much of the leather itself. So the top is going to stay fairly uh, straight. The bottom is going to be fairly straight until it gets down closer to where this bows uh, right here. And then I'll start taking that around that corner. Um, and I want to keep that right off of the edge so I will allow approximately the same width and I'll just mark a line marks all the way around that 
arc. And again, I'm staying approximately 16th to an eighth of an inch. And then I'll, co I'll connect those lines. And I will connect those lines freehand because I want to try to keep that arc. I don't want to attach or connect the line or the marks, like connect the dots. I don't want to do that with a straight edge or that'll give me a real uh, kind of an octagon looking shape. And I don't want that. I want to I want to keep my arc. And then when I get to the top, um, to the point, then I'll want to curve that. And I, I just keep different types of tools for those curves. Um, that one, a little large. Um, these cutting tools for like the end of straps, small belts or uh, large belts. Those are perfect for that because I have different sizes. So you can actually use one of those and I think this one's going to be pretty close and once I mark this I'll show it to you I'll arc that right into that line see right there where that arcs up so it's not a point it's not going to come down to a point we'll have a nice round tip there um, so the next thing I want to do is establish my depth and that's going to be at the base of the handguard here. So I've got that marked, but what I want to do is I want to make sure that I have that all the way across and that I get that base nice and straight. So I took my pen and marked that straight across where that guard would fall. So as you put the knife in the sheath, it's not going to sit at the bottom of the tip. The tip of the knife is not going to stick in the leather. There will be a little space between the bottom of the sheath and the tip of the knife. So it will actually sit on the guard. But what that does is that allows for nice smooth draw of the blade. So we can go ahead and uh, now measure so that we can allow for the stitching because I'm going to have to have space out here on the outside because this is where the knife's going to fall, these lines that I have on here right now. So the blade's going to fall within those lines. So I have to have more leather out here that I can put my stitches in that is outside of those lines where the blade's going to be. So I can give myself uh, about a quarter of an inch from that line and what that'll do is uh, that'll, that'll allow me to put a grooving line all the way around there for my stitching. And I can 
once I get this pattern laid out and uh, I can give you an idea of what it's going to look like but I think I will make it a quarter of an inch at this point because I don't want to get it so close that I'm going to get into uh, where the blade would get close to those stitches. Remember I'm going to put a thickness of another thickness of leather between the front and the back so I want to be real careful so I'll go ahead and make that quarter inch mark and then I'll do the same at the top top's a little easier because I don't have to worry about the radius as much at the tip so I'll go ahead and draw my quarter inch mark for my stitching across the top and then I'll do the same as I did on the inside line where the blade's going to be I'll allow a quarter inch for my stitching from that mark and this when you're making a pattern like this the main thing is that you want to do it slowly and you kind of have to think ahead a little bit kind of like in mind's eye you kind of have to sit back and look at it and okay if I do this and cut this leather this way what's going to happen you know it, for example if if I cut that leather too small and I force that knife blade in there and yeah I can make it fit I can slide that and force it in there but what that's going to do is that blade is going to cut into that leather uh, or it's going to cut into those stitches every single time you put the blade in and withdraw it from the sheath and it's not going to take very many times till you've cut through the uh, stitching so those are the kind of things you have to think about again it's it's that measure twice cut once thing you can always cut more off or trim more off but once you've cut your leather you can't add back to it so uh, I know that sounds uh, real basic but uh, if you've ever uh, done anything like that before and cut something too small even if it's slightly too small uh, man it's frustrating it's like, yeah, I can't add anything to it. I'm either half forced to use that piece or that two before, whatever it is you're cutting. I'm either forced to use that or I got to start over. So again, I'll follow that line those marks that quarter inch away from the edge all the way around to the top line so now you can see this outside line that's going to be excess between those two lines that you see there that's going to be excess to run my grooving and my stitching in. So the blade will fit inside that inside line. So that gives me plenty of space there. So I'm going to take, I've got 
all my pencil marks in there. Now I'm going to take my straight edge, take my pen, and complete the pattern. And I'll show you what that looks like. And you can kind of see how I develop that out of the pencil markings. And I'll just, on this curved area, again, I'll just follow that pencil mark with my pen and darken that in and hopefully you'll be able to really see the difference on the camera yeah it shows up good so you can see that's the outline of the actual piece of leather or really it's two pieces of leather that I'll end up cutting out of there because there'll be one for top and one for the bottom and again the one for the bottom uh, I'll have long enough to go back here that will fold over and stitch so um, I want it to kind of come up and on the back and contour around the handguard so that the handguard if the knife twists or turns uh, when it's hanging on your belt the handguard isn't poking into your side that it hits the back of the the sheath so what I'll do is um, I'll use a dotted line here um, for the back And that'll give me an idea it's kind of like a gun holster also that you know once you see the shape or you have the shape of the gun drawn out you can see exactly where you And then we're going to make it wide enough that the handle is also, the whole handle is the back of it's covered in leather also. Instead of the knife going in the sheath like so and this part back here below the handguard having the belt loop on it which I've seen before I'm bringing it all the way up here and the belt loop will be up here so I'll also be able to put a holding strap with a snap up here and that'll help hold the knife in the sheath Handguard does have a little bit sticking out on this side, not as bad as the bottom side, but I will need to allow for that too. And it looks like on here uh, it's going to be uh, wide enough. My material is going to be wide enough if I just bring that in just a hair and follow up. You'll see here in a second how I'm going to do it. Again, I'm going to use that dotted line. And I'll kind of get an idea 
it's going to be about two inches. So I'll come up to the top where I came up on this side with the dotted line. I'll go over and measure two inches and that'll give me a good straight line. from the bottom of the sheath up to where it's going to fold over at the top. And then I just need it to fold over up here, probably just at the tip or maybe just below, just barely below. So I'll lay the knife back down there. I've got it marked out, but I want to double check it. Put it on my original pencil marks. And it does come out. It, it shows. Um, that it comes out right at the top. So that's about right. So if to keep this knife straight in the sheath so that you don't get it. Um, tilted forward or the knife tilted backwards I'll uh, make a straight line from the actual handguard because that's the only straight line I have to go off of to make sure that it's going to be straight when you put it on a belt loop or on a belt so I'll measure down from that point to get me a straight line. I guess I can, I'll measure straight up. I don't need to make that line at the bottom. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and make that line go all the way across so that I can measure from the center also. That measures to the top of the knife, and I'm talking about the top of the handle. It measures from that mark right at four and a half inches. So I'll go ahead and mark it there. Come out to the outside of the hand guard, mark it at four and a half inches, and then come out to the other side of the hand guard and mark it at four and a half inches. And then I'll draw my line. And I'll mark that as my fold. So that's going to be four and a half inches from my hand guard up to the fold. And if I measured from my hand guard up to the top of the handle, it's approximately four, four and a quarter inches, so that's probably going to be perfect when I fold that over. And what that'll do is when I fold that, and I've marked it from the handguard line across where the handguard's going to sit in the bottom part of the sheath, then that will make should make that fold keep that knife straight up and down. So it's not going to be tilted forward or back. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to measure and see how far, I guess I could use the same measurement uh, and go four and a half inches from the fold up and that would be my excess that I'm going to fold over for my belt loop and then I can stitch it down here behind the handle of the knife. So I think that's what I'll do. So I'll go up another four and a half inches
and mark it. I'll come over to the other side and mark it at four and a half inches. I'll draw that line across. And then I'll continue the dotted line all the way up to that mark. And again, if I measure that, that's two inches. So I want to make sure that I stay exactly two inches and that line doesn't get skewed in any way. So I'll double check the measurement there. It looks really good so I'll continue my dotted line on that side. And that should keep that straight all the way up to my end cut. Then this is the piece that will fold over and actually stitch back here. That creates my belt loop or my belt and then the knife would sit in. The hand guard would hit right here. So all the blades down in this portion. So I've got my back So I've got my back pattern for my full piece ready to go and then my piece that will go over the top which will be the top or the front um, that's going to be uh, cut out and then I can always take that together if I need to cut another back for some reason um, and then I'll also have a piece that will go between, so I'll have to cut that piece out. And that's going to involve some uh, gluing. It will be stitched as Part of the stitching process so I'll actually be stitching through three pieces three thicknesses of leather which kind of makes it a little difficult um, but it can be done and this piece will have to be cut out separately so you have to be careful about the process or which step you cut out first because you're going to literally cut this pattern apart. So you can see the two lines here, that thickness, that'll be another piece of leather by itself. That'll go uh, all the way around and be stitched in. So that'll become the third thickness. So the next thing I need to do is cut my full back pattern out. Um, I will connect these lines now, these dotted lines. Make them solid so it makes it easier for me to follow as I'm cutting with my knife. I don't like to use scissors. I, I like to use a nice sharp razor knife. And then, once I get that cut out, we'll be ready to go on to finding a piece of leather that that's going to work on. So, I'm going to cut that out next and show you our finished pattern. Again, I, I like to cut with a razor knife, and I like to cut on one of these self-healing uh, cutting pads. And I think I'll start from the straight end. I think it'll be more 
a little easier to follow. And I could use my straight edge to follow, but when you're using one of these self-healing mats, it really helps. When you're cutting through paper like this, or cardboard, whatever you're using, if you've got one of those self-healing mats, uh, it really helps you cut straight lines. Because that blade runs through that poster board or that cardboard right into that self-healing mat and it helps you follow those lines. And I think the razor knife allows you to cut a smoother radius than a pair of scissors. That's just my opinion. Other people may prefer to use scissors. There's nothing wrong with that. I've used scissors before, but I just prefer to cut with a razor knife instead. And again, you notice how I try not to cut toward me, so I keep moving my piece. And I'll just keep moving that pattern around to where it's very comfortable for me to cut. Uh, that's the key. Any whether you're cutting leather or patterns, pattern material, is that it's comfortable. You want to make sure that it's very comfortable for you. If it's uncomfortable, then you either need to move or move your piece. The more comfortable you can make it for yourself, the better. And I think the better the cuts. So there's the scrap piece that I ended up with, and there's my pattern. I can actually take that piece, fold it over on that line, gives you a really good idea of what that sheet's going to look like just with the pattern material. So the next step will be finding a piece of leather for this and uh, getting this pattern laid out on the leather and we'll go from there. Well thanks for coming back and watching the next project, uh, the first in the series of making a knife sheath. And again, I have uh, a little surprise at the end. Um, so make sure you stick around for the whole complete series and tune in next time where we'll be taking our pattern that we made today and transferring it to a piece of leather and we'll be ready for the next step in the series. So, like I always say, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.